thank you for the slight health warning, and thank you, those of you who took him up on it. Uh, okay. We'll be bringing it on. Okay. Let's begin with what I suspect is the most recent thing that most of us have encountered of yours with the Kissinger film. Okay. I guess we better hold these up to our mouths. Is this okay? All right. Let's begin with what I suspect is the most recent thing of yours that most of us have encountered, which is the Kissinger film and the book that gave rise to it. Uh, what you were really doing in the film and the book is telling us that Henry Kissinger ought to be indicted as a war criminal. Give us a bill of particulars of the indictment. Well, war criminal is Henry Kissinger's job description and has been since he first caught Richard Nixon's eye as a talented guy in 1968. And since then he's had a sort of one-man international rolling uh, crime wave extending not just through the subversion of the United States election of that year and the betrayal and subversion of the Paris peace talks, both of them, in my opinion, uh, acts of treason, but through the devastation of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos, the prolonging of an unjust war of aggression and atrocity for at least four years. In those four years, you will remember, comrades, um, about half the names on the Vietnam Memorial were inscribed and we wouldn't have the nerve or the ability to, to put up a wall that would have all the names of the Indo-Chinese on it. Uh, then to Chile, to the destruction of parliamentary democracy and the murder of its president. Um, then to Cyprus, uh, a similar coup against an elected uh, president, uh, the destruction of a democracy, the partition of Cyprus between two aggressive uh, NATO powers. Uh, then the uh, direct uh, individual collusion, uh, sitting in the room with the planners of the invasion and extirpation of East Timor. And I don't think I have exhausted, no, I've left out Angola, for example, I've left out Bangladesh. I've done this a lot of times, I always leave out something. I, I've, I sometimes look at my own stuff and think, is this all true? I went over it with the fact checkers. and felt sick at thinking, really, we're not, you know, all of this is, abs it, it all did happen. It all really did occur. Um, now, since uh, the book came out and since the film um, was made, um, I can report some, at least, mildly encouraging developments. Um, on Memorial Day last year, um, I'm proud to say just after my book came out in French, Mr. Kissing was visited in the Ritz Hotel in Paris by the gendarmerie and served with a summons to testify about what he knew about the disappearance of French people in Chile. He fled town. He, he fled town on the same day and hasn't gone back, and, and the summons is still current if he does go. Uh, since then, the magistrates in Argentina, Judge Rodolfo Corral, who's the main prosecutor in the death squad cases in Argentina, have summoned him as well. So has Judge Guzman. Uh, from Chile, the, the justice in the Pinochet case. I went down to Chile a few months ago and testified before Judge Guz Guzman myself against uh, Kissinger. Case is being built. The Brazilian government recently told Kissinger to cancel a trip, an official trip he was making. Um, he, an attempt was made to arrest him on his last visit to London. It's not much, but the air around the bastard is being shrunk a bit. The oxygen's being taken away. And he... Um, and he can't travel much, and when he does, he has to consult lawyers. And there is in federal court in Washington, D.C., filed, alas, on September the 11th, 2001, which, as you also know, is the anniversary of the coup in Chile, but for that reason, not as well known as it might be, um, the relatives of General Schneider, the murdered head of the Chilean general staff in 1970, have filed a federal suit against Henry Kissinger for murder. And every document in that uh, suit is a U.S. government declassified document. That's, as far as I know, an unprecedented lawsuit. And this is good news, too. Um, so at least I think I can say I probably changed his obituary. Um, I used to wish he would die. Now I hope he will live until justice catches up with him. But let me just remark something to you. Chilean courts, Argentine courts, French courts, Chilean civilians bringing their own lawsuit, paying for it themselves, who've already had family members murdered. What's missing here? What's missing here is a sense of shame on the part of everyone in the United States. Why is an American district attorney not doing this? Why is Congress not doing it? 
why the American court's not doing it, and why is the United States government sheltering a wanted war criminal? These are the main questions.